Hello everyone and welcome to another awesome lesson today, Grade 6, Module 4, Lesson 8. Replacing numbers with letters, student outcomes for today. Students understand that a letter in an expression or an equation can represent a number, and when that number is replaced with a letter, an expression or an equation is stated. Students will also discover the commutative properties of addition and multiplication, and the additive identity property of 0, and the multiplicative identity property of 1. They will determine that g divided by 1 equals g, g divided by g equals 1, and 1 divided by g equals 1 over g. So in this lesson, I try to follow your book as closely as I can, but I do jump around a little bit. So you may need to pause the video, re rewind a little bit. And some of the questions in your book, you're just simply going to have to answer on your own. So let's start out with our opening exercise here. Um, we have five expressions here. And I want you to pause the video, take a moment, and determine whether or not they are all true. Well, it was probably easy, easy for you to figure out that all five statements are in fact true and correct. Now on to our next question. Every place you see a number 4, take out the number 4 and write the number 7 and see if those statements are true. So go, go ahead, pause the video, do your work, and come back when you're ready. So you probably, once again, quickly figured out that all five statements are true when we substitute the number 4 with the number 7. How about for the number 0? This time, every place you see the number 4, please write the number 0 and then check your work and see if they're all still true. Hint, hint. So this time, 0 plus 0 it does equal 0. 0 times 1 does equal 0. 0 divided by 1 does also equal 0. 0 times 0 equals 0. But this last one, 1 divided by 0 equals 1 over 0. That is incorrect. And the reason, the simplest reason for understanding that, you can't take one thing and put it in 0 groups. So if you're holding your pencil in your hand, try to put it in a group of 0. You simply can't do it, so it's impossible. But how about the letter G? This time we're going to replace the number 4 with the letter G. So again, any place you see the number 4, please write the letter G and then come back when you're ready. So here's what our work looks like. And the question is, would these five statements be correct for any number that we put in for G? Well, the answer is yes and no. For the top four, you definitely put in any number for the letter G and make these statements correct. But for the last one, there's a little catch there. You might remember from the previous uh, discussion here. G can be any number for the last one except for the number zero. So let's look at example one, the additive identity property of one. Here we have a statement, G plus zero equals G. So the question is, can we put in any number for the letter G? Well, let's throw out a few numbers here. Let's do 7 plus 0 equals 7. Is that correct? It sure is. Let's choose a bigger number. 56 plus 0 equals 56. Is that correct? The answer is yes. So you could pause the video, throw in some different numbers for the letter G, and see if they work out. Well, what would you find out? Do they all work? The answer is yes. So we can throw in any number for the letter G, including the number 0, and they'll always be correct. So let's write some language to go along with that. And here's our language. The additive identity property of 0. G plus 0 equals 0. There's our sample. Any number added to it, added to 0, equals itself. So this is the rule for the additive identity property of zero. Take a moment and write that down and come back when you're ready. Example two, a lot similar to the first example, we have the multiplicative identity property of one. So the question again is, can we put in any number for the letter G? We'll start off with a couple examples. Let's make G equal six. Six times one equals six. Is that correct? Yes, it is. How about, let's throw a fraction in this time, 3, 3 fourths times 1 equals 3 fourths. Is that correct? 
And once again, the answer is yes. So pause the video, see if you can stump it this time, throw in some different numbers for the letter G, and see if they're always correct. All right, so what did you find out? Um, you probably discovered and observed that any number can be put in for the letter G, including zero. It does equal zero, so that works as well. So let's get the language to go along with this rule here. So the property is the multiplicative identity property of one. Here's our sample again. We're working with the letter G, but it could be, you know, we could do C times one equals C, but we're just working with the G because that was our first example. And here's our statement. Any number multiplied by one equals itself, including, as we found out, zero. Zero times one does equal zero. On to some other examples. Example three, the commutative property of addition and multiplication. So for the, these samples here, what we're going to do is every time you see the number three, you're going to take out the number three and put in the letter A. So pause the video and take a moment to complete that. So here's my completed work. I have A's in place of all those number threes. Now the next question is, can I replace that letter A with any number and still have it be correct. So for this example, let's replace the letter A with number five. So go ahead, replace the, all the A's with the number five and check your work and come back when you're ready. So here's my completed work. And if you take a moment, or if you took a moment, you would discover that they are in fact correct for all four examples. So let's rewrite these statements one last time. In any place you see the number 5, write the letter A. In any place you see the number 4, write the letter B. Complete your work and come back when you're ready. So here's what these statements now look like in their entirety. Double check them against your work. And now we're, we're at the point where we can start writing the mathematical language that goes along with the commutative property of addition and multiplication. So here's my sample up in the corner. I made it a little bit smaller, but it's the same one you have in your book. And we'll tackle them one at a time. Let's look at the commutative property of addition first. And that's that first one here. And basically what that says is A plus B equals B plus A is the commutative property of addition. Order does not matter when adding. And then for the second half here, we have the commutative property of multiplication. A times B equals B times A. The commutative property of addition, excuse me, of multiplication, order does not matter. So on both of these examples, these rules here, these properties are just incorrect. And it, they're pretty simple. They do make sense. And when in doubt, you can always put some numbers in for the letters to test them. You guys did an awesome job in your lesson today down in the bottom right hand corner of your last page just write E C S rocks and when you're all done you can go on to your exit ticket please bring it to me when you're done and have a great day